Why do I recommend philosophical books, especially great philosophical books? One of the reasons is because they articulate basic problems, uh, most fundamental issues that deal with human existence, independently of time, I mean historical epoch or culture in which these books were written. So it does not have to be that the philosophical book is just, you know, uh, um, a system of thought of a given person or a given figure. More often, it is a system by means of which a given author, a given philosopher, a given, you know, men of letters, as they said some time ago, would transmit most important issues of human existence as seen from the point of view of his time or her time and of his culture or her culture. So it is a sort of transmission of most interesting, most fundamental, vital issues of humankind. Perhaps not everybody knows the book I'm going to talk about today, but everybody knows Cogito Ergo Sum. And Cogito Ergo Sum is a very famous thing, very famous phrase, which can be translated into English as uh, I'm thinking, therefore I exist. But I will not talk specifically about this issue. I will think, I will talk about something that is very close to this and which in technical philosophical language we call methodological skepticism and in ordinary language we, uh, we may call it how to avoid mistakes. So this book by Descartes uh, from the 17th century was dedicated to the problem how to avoid mistakes in, for example, scientific type of thinking, but not only scientific way of thinking. Um, so this book reflects or shows or articulates or manifests um, the problem that is all that has always been a problem for philosophers or for people living in, in different cultures, how to differentiate, how to know the difference between somebody's opinion, especially opinions that are not justified, vindicated, they are the true opinions and knowledge or set of views that are not mistaken. So um, independently of, you know, of this time and epoch, the problem is, you know, universal. And this is the strongest point, by the way, the strongest point of philosophy, in my view. I mean, philosophers are very weak, I think, in, in providing with, you know, solutions, proposals. But philosophers are very strong as far as asking fundamental questions are, is concerned. The Cartesian proposal is to doubt about everything that is possible. I mean, not to believe in things without verification of these things. So if you believe in something, um, well, you may believe, you know, what you want, but if we want to see this belief as sort of reliable knowledge, so it must be verified according to some standards. And um, so the proposal here is that we should be skeptical or doubt doubtful about things unless we have verification of these things. And Descartes uh, suggested, uh, you know, crazy ideas that, um, for example, how do you know that you exist now maybe it's a kind of i don't know a hallucination or illusion like in matrix or some movies we watch that people exist but they actually do not exist because they live in a sort of dream that was um i don't know prepared or invented by somebody else who has power or technological power or spiritual spiritual power and and had organized everything and and you know we have consciousness about our existence, but we do not exist because it's our illusion. How do we know that we exist? So, of course, you know, it may sound crazy, but it's a very good exercise uh, for rationalization or for giving arguments or, or for critical thinking. Why we believe in or treat as something as true or truth 
when we have not a solid verification of this. So, so this is Cartesian proposal to, uh, to show us that we have to be careful as far as our views are concerned. The difference between opinion and knowledge is at stake here. It has been always a big issue amongst philosophers and people who deal with science and you know technologies, social sciences and so on. And in this book we have this um, problem. So uh, what is opinion? Opinion is just a view of an individual person or a group of people that has not been verified in a solid way. And sorry for this word solid, uh, because uh, solid may mean hardly anything, but according to those who believe that we have knowledge, knowledge would be something solid. That is, would be knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge would be opinion of some people, but verified, falsified, applicable to some, you know, technological, social uh, thing. So, opinion, if verified and confirmed by reliable methodology, would be something like knowledge. Um, I will give you a couple of examples why it is important. For example, when we go to a doctor, I think, well, me at least, I would like to believe that what the doctor will tell me about my health, it is not his private opinion, but his knowledge, medical knowledge that he can offer, she can offer me. The same with technology. When, I'm, when I want to go, I don't know, travel by plane, I want to believe that the airplane is okay, not because there is some opinion about that, but there is knowledge, techno technological knowledge confirmed and verified by some experts that the airplane is okay. Methodological skepticism versus media echo chambers. This is interesting now. It is interesting, of course, because we have the internet and we have access to a whole lot of information, a whole lot of ways of thinking, you know, of showing things. And um, the problem of selection, of what is true, what is not true, what is reliable, what is not reliable. This is an interesting challenge for us, for everybody nowadays. Um, so uh, what is, you know, eco chambers? Well, we participate in this when we are, for example, on the internet, and when we look for confirmation of whatever we think, because we don't want to confront uh, other opinions, other views, but we want to confirm our views. And uh, sometimes we do it all the time, right? When we, you know, when we select on YouTube the videos that we like, that confirm our views, but perhaps more importantly, we have filter bubbles, that is algorithms that do it, um, but we not always know about that, that you have, we have advertisements, we have different proposals, and it is not because we choose it, but algorithm do it. So uh, anyway, um, it is something problematic from the point of view of uh, uh, Cartesian proposal, because Cartesian proposal would be that if we want to know something. No, I, I, I emphasize this. No. Uh, we should confront different views. And as a result of this confrontation, I mean peaceful confrontation, intellectual confrontation, confrontation that uses rationalization, thinking, critical thinking, all this stuff. So as a result of this confrontation, we have a better result. Because, you know, maybe I was wrong. Maybe the other party was, was, uh, had more solid argumentation about something that is important. So uh, echo chambers can be something wonderful. I appreciate that. For example, when we have hobbies or when we have some interests about some, you know, something, and then we invite people from different, you know, countries and mm, those who are interested in a given topic, we talk to them, we exchange opinions, we exchange thoughts, you know, we exchange maybe some materials. Wonderful! What, what's wrong here? 
here it is nothing wrong. However, when we imitate this mechanism as far as some you know more serious things, I mean more socially serious things like you know technology, like I don't know social justice issues, like politics, it can be problematic because uh, when we are within these echo chambers and we can hear our arguments and views that are very similar to ours, we lose the ability to confront intellectually or, or by rational argumentation. We, we, we lose the ability to confront, to confront with other views, which means that we lose the ability to deal with people who think in a different way. Maybe because they are from different culture, or maybe because they have different views, or maybe perhaps they have different methods of saying things, or assessing things, evaluate things. So from this viewpoint, echo chambers may be something very um, problematic and, and, and divisive and polarizing people. Anyway, um, methodological skepticism is just the opposite. It would say, we need to intellectually confront opinions that are different in order to know which opinion has more solid justification, more solid, I would say, verification. And that's why we have progress, for example, in technology, for example, in arrangement of social um, institutions. Of course, when I'm using such technical words as verification, falsification, I'm not referring directly to Descartes, who did not use these words, but I'm referring to this project that he initiated because it was you know, the beginning of modern science or thinking about modern science and, and methods in science. So when I'm commenting on this now, I'm, I'm, I'm using more this project that has developed up till now and confronts different criticisms. Uh, not just, not, I, I'm not specifically talking about the card, but his project. And what, what is confronted now? I mean, what criticism this project has today? For example, postmodernism. Postmodernism would say that this project, that this way of hoping that we are able, by means of some definite method, to reach the truth, reach the fundamental I don't know, basis of things, is, is impossible simply, because, as postmodernists would say, always we are using some assumptions in the first place, and always we are using some tools that are social constructs, for example, language. So the assumption in Cartesian project probably would be that language is an appropriate or adequate tool by means of which we could know what is the truth about our world, but it's an assumption. And postmodernists or social constructivists would say that language and of course, I'm not talking about specific ethnic language, uh, Spanish, English, French, but any language by means of which we want to describe reality, describe the world, describe social relations. Any language as a social construct is just a social construct and does not refer directly to the, I would say, objective, neutral picture of the world. So this assumption, what language is and who uses the language for what aims, is problematic here. Feminism would continue this criticism by saying that um, this method or this methodology or even this hope for getting into uh, objective truth was um, inside a way of thinking that is a product of a certain type of culture or intellectual culture, that is, um, well-educated white Europeans. Um, and th the hope to get 
to some objective truth was hopeless at the very beginning because it was a certain group of people that decided, oh, this method would be the best. But uh, accidental, perhaps, this group of people was well-educated uh, uh, white males. So, for example, the distrust the, uh, uh, to senses, to sexuality, to emotions among this group of people would, for example, be a sort of indicator that it is not, um, I would say, uh, a method that would be universal, universally valid, but rather it was uh, a specific cultural product used by some specific group of people. Whatever the case, I think it's fascinating to think about this methodological um, skepticism because at least it makes us more sensitive to different issues amongst you know, many people who are so, I would say, so enthusiastic about telling us what is absolute true. I think we have a sort of coming back to this way of thinking that many people or many groups of people engage in political debate, for example, they think that their view is absolutely true. So, um, in this age of relativism, cultural pluralism, methodological, you know, pluralism, it's, it's nice to think, hmm, if somebody or some group of people or representatives of some group of people say that something is absolutely true, maybe it's a good thing, uh, a, a good thing to think about methodological skepticism. How do you know it's, you know, it's true? Maybe this criticism is really not a definite answer, but a very important question to be asked. And, and that's why I recommend this method, not because I'm you know Cartesian type of person, but I love uh, this, uh, this tool, this methodological skepticism tool by means of which we may be more careful in, in, in trying to distinguish are we right in doing something? Are we right in condemning others when they want to do something? I think it's very practical.